Hello and welcome to Frotch on Fighting with me, Carl the Cobra Frotch. If you're new to this channel, hit subscribe and hit the notification bell because I bring out a new episode every Wednesday. There's also a bonus episodes if I'm out on a live broadcast. But don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you're enjoying yourself and then you won't miss anything. I was in Manchester this Saturday for the Lara v Wood rematch. What a fight that was. If you've not seen my immediate ringside reaction, go and check it out on my YouTube channel. Right, we've received so many questions. We obviously can't get through all of them, but thank you for sending them in anyway. We're going to go through some of the questions that really stand out. Rachel, over to you. So, you versus Tony Bellew at light heavyweight, what would have happened? Me versus Tony Bellew at light heavyweight. What a great question. I tell you what, well, of course I'd have won. I'd back myself to win, but it would have been a great fight. Um, sparring with Tony Bellew over the years was so intense. We used to close the blinds at the AIS in Sheffield. We used to just dim the lights on the outside and have the lights on in the ring so we made it a bit like a fight atmosphere. And I'll tell you what, we could have probably filled that place. We could have sold tickets because some of the 12-round wars we had in that gym were just, just amazing, just to even be part of. But he'd, he'd just have his trainer. I'd have my coach, Ron McCracken, and there'd be a privileged few people just around. No phones, no filming, which is a shame because it'd be nice to see the footage now. But um, some of them sparring sessions, Tony would hit me on the chin. I'd be a bit wobbled. I'd be angry, come out the next round, get him back. He'd be feeling the pace as well towards the end um, because he, at light heavyweight, he used to have to take quite a bit of weight off. But he always had a bit of strength and size on me, which, which balanced it because I was quite experienced at world level and he was still looking to fight for a world title. But that would have been a great fight. And um, obviously, I'd back myself to win. But Tony Bellew, I'm sure, would disagree. He'd probably tell you he'd knock me out when I'm left hooks. So next question. This is from Aqua from Manchester. If you were to have an exhibition boxing match with a celebrity or a tied boxer, who would you want that to be with and why? Celebrity or retired boxer? What about a retired MMA fight? You know what? The only, the only guy at the minute that comes to mind... Is he retired? Um, McGregor, I think, is retired from MMA. Yeah. I don't know what he's up to now. I see him with Eddie Hearn the other day. and the, Somebody asked him, what about Carl Frotch? And his answer was, ah, per, 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 per. What does per, 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 per mean? That doesn't even mean anything. What that means to me is, Conor McGregor doesn't want to fight me in a boxing ring, which is fine. I don't blame him. He'd get absolutely annihilated. So... Yeah, a celebrity match with somebody. There's nobody else celebrity-wise, really, that I'd, I'd like to give a pace in. There's a few, but I don't want to mention their names. Maybe save that for another day. But, yeah, Conor McGregor, celebrity boxing match. Let's do it. The next one is, this is from Nobleman. In your opinion, should AJ have stayed with Rob as his trainer? And do you feel that Rob was in any way blamed for AJ's failings? Was the only way to blame for AJ's fans? Well, should AJ stay with Rob McCracken? I think AJ should do what suits him and he's, he's left Rob for whatever reason. If he's not comfortable with the relationship, if it's broken down for whatever reason, then obviously you can't stay with a trainer if you're not working well with him. If the relationship breaks down, you have to part company. And that's what he did. So I, I would say he should have stayed with Rob McCracken, should sort out any, any beef they had or any disagreements. Because I think Rob McCracken knows boxing inside out. He's... He's just experienced himself at amateur level and world title level. He fought for world title himself. He fought, he fought Howard Eastman. He fought Keith Holmes. And, you know, he's campaigned at every level, amateur and pro. And he also had me from day one right up to multiple world titles. So I think he's experienced and he's brilliant. He's up at the IS in Sheffield training all the Olympians. So I don't think AJ should have left him. I think if he'd have stayed with Ron McCracken and listened to him, and that's the key difference here. I used to listen to Rob. And when he told me something or give me any advice or ask me to do anything, I did it without question. Now, I don't think that was happening with, with AJ because he always sort of questioned things. He was quite an inquisitive guy. Um, I like AJ. I like, I like his ambition. I like his, his, the way his mind thinks. He thinks big. He won an Olympic gold medal. He went on. He's, he's had a great professional career so far. A lot of people think I'm always beating him down. But he's had a bad loss against Ruiz. You know, he, he, um, he lost twice to Usyk, who's come up from Cruiserweight. U Usyk's a great fighter. It's no shame losing to him. But I just think the tactics, the way in which he, he went about the rematch, I think if it was Rob McCracken, if he was with him, and he would have listened to him and his experience and executed a game plan, then I just think the, the result could have been different. So, yeah, he should have stayed with Rob. But if it's the right decision for him to make, because he's not getting on with him, then he has to move on, which he's done. Okay, right. So next question. If you were the ref, would you have disqualified a Coley? 
Would I have disqualified for Coley? Um, you know what? It was a messy, horrible fight that was with Chris Billum Smith. And congratulations to Chris Billum Smith, which, which I've already said. I mean, great win for him. And um, yeah, fantastic for him. Coley, I just feel that he's a bit unsure of himself. He's not that confident, and it shows in his style. He's a little bit. He's a bit. He's got a bit of an irky jerky style, but he's awkward, and he holds quite a lot. He gets in close and kind of mauls his opponents. Tries to close the gap, and when a fighter tries to close that distance, it stops your opponent from punching. So it obviously stops you from getting hit. But the problem is in boxing, to be able to land punches, you need to give yourself a bit of room. As soon as you give yourself a bit of room, you're in danger of getting hit back yourself. So. I don't think he's confident enough in his ability. So that's why he fights so awkward and, and quite horrible. It's, it's, not, it's not nice to watch that style. So if he keeps infringing the rules and keeps repeatedly fouling, then yes, he needs disqualifying. But in that fight, I don't think it was... It was bad, but I don't think it was bad enough to throw him out and disqualify him. He was the champion. You've got to give him the chance. And you've also got to give Chris, Chris Billum Smith the chance to become a champion, which is what happened in the end. So the right man won. Lawrence Sokoli didn't get disqualified and embarrassed, but he lost the fight fair and square. So um, to answer the question, I probably wouldn't have disqualified him, no. But I can see why people feel that maybe he can be disqualified or should be disqualified because that style is awkward and horrible. And uh, let's not forget, boxing's an entertainment business. You're in there to box and win by any means necessary. But you're also kind of obligated to put on a show and entertain because people are paying money to see a show. So this is from Terry. Next question. Who would have won out of Canelo versus Mayweather, both in their prime? Both in their prime. Well, Floyd Mayweather's already beat Canelo Alvarez, and Floyd Mayweather beats everybody he gets in with. Um, so whether they're in the prime or not, I mean, Mayweather was probably past his best slightly when he, when he fought Canelo. And Canelo was probably, was, you can argue, was in his prime or not. But Mayweather's already beat Canelo, and I think Mayweather beats not just Canelo, but anybody ever fights, which he has done. So for me, that question's easy to answer. Floyd Mayweather is the best boxer of all time. Maybe not of all time. There's a, there's a few close seconds. Robin McCracken, my coach, always mentions Sugar Ray Robinson, the amount of fights he's had compared to the amount of wins and losses. I mean, when you go back to the old school and back to different eras, it's hard to say. But Floyd Mayweather wins that fight, I think, every time. Uh, next question. I don't like this question. <laughs> Someone's thought, do you still play an instrument? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, of course, I still play an instrument. A bit of a guitarist. <laughs> Didn't someone ask you about um, another talent I've got? No. Yeah, they did. There's a bit of guitar playing the guitar and a bit no, of singing. No, no, no. You're fine with I'm that. I'm obviously not going to sing. <laughs> Remember that episode in the office with um, David Brent and he was doing that training thing and he says um, he's got his guitar. He went home to get it. Well, guess what? <laughs> guess what I've got here? Ooh, yeah. Look at this little baby. Don't sing. I'm not going to sing. Did somebody ask if I can actually still play the guitar? Yeah, I'm going to sing. Yeah, Hang on a minute. Let me just get warm. Is that you playing? I can't sing you playing. Mm, no. No, no singing. Play, no. Just let me do a little tune. You're so? I'd literally love to give you a little song, a bit of Johnny Cash, a bit no, of Folsom Prison Blues. Folsom Prison Blues, Johnny Cash. I, I can still play the guitar, as you can see. I can sing, but Rachel begs to differ. <laughs> she don't believe me. So um, I'm not going to give you a song, but that was a little taster for you. Maybe another day, but yeah, I still do play the Please guitar. The I've got Rocco playing the guitar, and um, he loves it, and we have a bit of a sing-along sometimes. But um, I'm not allowed to sing. You heard it. She went mad. I'm not going to argue with a fellow, <laughs> a scouser, because she can go a bit, a little bit crazy insane. <laughs> you love that crazy. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Leave it here. <laughs> Next question is, would you let any of your children box? Hmm, that's a tricky one. I've got a boy, 12-year-old boy, Rocco, and I've got two girls. Natalia, she's 10, and my, my youngest girl, Penelope, she's 7. Um, would I let them box? Well, I train all three of them because I think it's really important to be able to at least stand up, have balance, be able to throw punches just, just for the self-defense reason um, of being able to fight and look after yourself. Because you never know, do you? I mean, we don't really live in a civilized, friendly world at times. And I think... 
if you can look after yourself and you can throw a punch and then get on your toes and get out of the situation, that's always the best thing to do. So yeah, I train them all and they're boxing on the pads with me, on the bag, they're in the gym, they're all very strong. I mean, they've got a dad like me um, as a role model, so they've got to try and keep up, you know. But will I let them box? Probably not. Um, I love I love boxing. I think it's the best sport in the world. It's brilliant. It tests your courage, your character, your discipline, um, just your mindset. You, you need everything. It's a sport, and you're on your own in there as well. It's not a team sport. So I just think it's brilliant. <laughs> Rocco is getting his medical actually on Sunday, so I'm kind of contradicting myself because I'm letting him. I'd let my kids do whatever they want to do, but I wouldn't encourage my children to fight, although I am training them. So to answer your question, would I let them box? Um, of course I'd let them box if they wanted to, but I'm not going to push them towards it just because I think there's, there's better ways to, to live your life and earn a living rather than getting punched in the face. But if you actually want to box and you want to go in there and do it, then you know, make your own decision, make your own mind up. And if you want to box, box. But then my children, I kind of get a say in what they, they do. But ultimately, when they're old enough, they can do whatever they want. Rocco's pretty good as well. He's quite tough. We have a bit of body sparring. I actually dropped him the other day. I think it was a left hook to the body. No, you didn't. It was only a light little tap oh, around the solar plexus. Oh, Listen, I'm not showing off. He's 12 years old. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, he got it in the body and he didn't stay down. And he wanted to cry. He didn't cry. He couldn't breathe. Well, I didn't I went, see this. I was like, five, six. You don't see a lot of girls from here, Rocker. Six, seven. He was on the floor and I went, come on, man. You're going to stay down. And he got up and he sucked it in. And I said, right, get your arms up. And then he moved around. So even a 12-year-old boy doesn't quit to the body. Just to reinforce and um, touch back on a previous episode. But no, I don't want them to fight. So that's a wrap for another episode of Frosh on Fighting. Don't forget to subscribe if you're enjoying yourself. And I will see you next week.